So, the uh, next example uh, involves um, dehumidification. So, the, uh, the problem statement uh, reads like this moist air at 35 degree Celsius, one atmosphere and 80 percent relative humidity enters an air conditioning duct where it is cooled and dehumidified as shown in the figure. Both the condensate and the air that is saturated that is very important. So, the air leaves uh, fully saturated uh, leaves at 22 degree Celsius. Uh, the volume flow rate of air at the inlet is 120 meter cube per minute. Assuming steady state operation and neglecting heat loss, determine the mass flow rate of the condensate, the required cooling capacity in tons. Okay. Assume that the pressure remains constant. So, um, the scenario is uh, depicted here. So, we have a cooling coil. So, air uh, enters the duct. Uh, at 35 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere, 80 percent relative humidity and a volume flow rate of 120 meter cube per minute. So, it leaves uh, saturated which means phi equal to 100 percent and the pressure remains the same. So, the mixture pressure remains the same at one atmosphere, temperature is 22 degrees Celsius. Now, as a result of uh, heat removal from the uh, duct, uh, some of the water vapor condenses and it is collected as saturated liquid at uh, 22 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, at the inlet relative humidity is given as uh, 0.8 uh, 80 percent or 0 0.8 and uh, uh, from the uh, temperature table we can uh, retrieve the saturation pressure corresponding to 35 degrees Celsius and that is 5.627 kilo Pascal. So, the partial pressure of water vapor at the inlet works out to 4.5016 kilo Pascal. And once we have this value, we may evaluate uh, omega, the uh, humidity ratio at the inlet omega 1 uh, using this expression and that comes out to be 0 0.0289 kg vapor per kg dry air. Now, volume flow rate of air is given at the inlet and as I uh, mentioned in the previous example, we are using the Dalton's model. So, volume flow rate of uh, air, uh, dry air as well as vapor are all the same. So, we may take this to be the given value to be the volumetric flow rate of uh, dry air. So, m dot a may be evaluated using the ideal gas equation of state like this. Okay. And the partial pressure of dry air is what needs to be used in the equation of state for dry air. So, if you substitute the values, uh, we get the mass flow rate to be 131.447 kilogram per minute of dry air. At the exit, the air is saturated. So, the partial pressure of water vapor is equal to the saturation pressure corresponding to the mixture temperature which is 22 degrees Celsius. So, from the temperature table, uh, the partial pressure of water vapor at exit then uh, becomes equal to 2.645 kilo Pascal. And omega 2 at the exit may be evaluated in the same manner as before after noting that the uh, mixture pressure remains the same. Okay. So, we get this to be 0 0.0167 kg vapor per kg dry air. The mass flow rate of uh, dry air is the same between inlet and outlet, but the amount of water vapor has decreased as you can see from here. I am sorry. So, at the inlet, uh, the humidity ratio is 0 0.0289 kg vapor per kg dry air, and at the exit, it is 0. Uh, 0167. So, it is almost halved between inlet to exit. Okay. Uh, if you look at the uh, duct itself, uh, so we have a certain amount of uh, uh, mass flow rate of water that is coming in through the inlet, a certain mass flow rate of water that leaves through the exit, whether in vapor form or uh, liquid form. So, we do not care about that. We are only uh, looking at mass of water or mass flow rate between inlets and outlets. So, here saturated uh, liquid leaves at 20 degree Celsius. So, the mass balance applied to this control volume uh, gives the following mass flow rate of uh, water uh, liquid water that leaves the control volume is equal to uh, mass flow rate of vapor that comes in minus mass flow rate of vapor that leaves. And if you use the um, uh, definition of uh, omega, Remember, omega is equal to uh, m dot vapor divided by m dot dry air. So, we may rewrite this and the mass flow rate of dry air remains the same or remains constant between inlet and exit. So, we can get uh, the mass flow rate of liquid water to be 1.6037 kg per minute. 
simple mass balance of water across the control volume. Now, SFE applied to the control volume uh, shown gives the following q dot minus w x dot which is 0 because there is no uh, work input or output from the control volume m dot h uh, m dot 1 h 1 minus m dot 2 h 2 minus m dot 3 h 3. So, we may rewrite this as follows uh, in terms of dry air and water vapor and liquid water. So, this uh, works out to uh, these three terms may be combined to read like this m dot a times h a 2 minus h a 1 enthalpy change of dry air plus m dot v 2 h v 2 minus m dot v 1 h v 1 that is the enthalpy change of uh, the water vapor plus m dot 3 times uh, h 3. So, we have uh, basically taken everything to the right hand side that is why this uh, sign has become plus. And since dry air is being uh, modeled as uh, an ideal gas, we may write uh, H A 2 minus H A 1 as C P A times T 2 minus T 1. And just like before, we use the definition of omega to replace m dot uh, V in terms of m dot A, the mass flow rate of dry air. So, expression reduces to something like this and H V 2 is approximated as H G of T 2. Okay. H V 1 is approximated as H G of T 1 and enthalpy of the liquid water is equal to the uh, enthalpy of the saturated liquid at temperature T 3. So, we can retrieve these values from the uh, temperature table H uh, G of T 2, H G of T 1 and H F of T 3 and if you plug these values into the above expression, we get Q to be equal to this which when converted to tons comes out to be 27.17 tons of refrigeration. So, you can see how um, the uh, relative humidity in the air is controlled. So, you can see that when we um, uh, when we cool the air, so at the inlet the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. So, this is a typical uh, atmospheric conditions in a place like Chennai 35 degrees Celsius 80 percent relative humidity. Right. So, you take this air and you first reduce the temperature by using a cooling coil. When you do that, the water vapor condenses. So, you can see that the temperature is reduced. However, the uh, relative humidity has increased, which is not nice. Okay. So, we want uh, the temperature to be comfortable, relative humidity also to be comfortable. Okay. So, this air will then be taken to uh, another um, uh, unit operation duct where we may uh, heat the air slightly and adjust the relative humidity so that uh, both the temperature and the relative humidity are comfortable. See 22 is somewhat on the lower side temperature of 20 degree Celsius is on the lower side. It can probably be adjusted so that uh, we get the relative humidity and the temperature to a comfortable value. So, this is how uh, the uh, ambient environment in large buildings is controlled. The uh, next example is about a domestic evaporative cooler. So, uh, it is quite popular um, in uh, many uh, dry or in, in uh, regions where the climate is dry. Okay. As I said, you know this cannot be used in Chennai because relative humidity is already high. Okay, but it can be used in uh, cities like Hyderabad or other places where the relative humidity of the air is uh, somewhat on the low side. So basically, you have a wick which is wet, and you blow air uh, through this wick. The water evaporates, and the evaporation of the water draws uh, energy from the air, and the air cools down. So this is an evaporative cooler. However, notice that the um, uh, relative humidity of uh, the air in the room increases as a result of the uh, water that evaporates into the room, which may not be a bad thing where the climate is dry because relative humidity already is very low. So, additional moisture is good and reducing temperature is also good. So, it is used in uh, it is used as sort of like a poor man's air conditioner in, uh, uh, in places where the air is dry uh, and hot. Okay. So, it is a cheaper alternative to air conditioner where the air is hot but relatively dry. Okay. So, hot air at 40 degree Celsius one atmosphere 15 percent relative humidity enters the cooler at a rate of 1.344 meter cube per second. Saturated liquid water at 25 degree Celsius enters the wick where it evaporates. A fan driven by an electric motor rated at 250 watt 
pulls the air through the cooler and sends it out at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. Assuming steady state operation, calculate mass flow rate of liquid water and relative humidity of the air at the exit. The pressure remains constant. So, a sketch of the uh, domestic cooler looks like this. So, we have a wick which is uh, soaked in water. So, air hot and dry air comes in. So, as a result of passing through this wick, the uh, water evaporates and uh, temperature of the air that is going through it comes down and then uh, the humidity of the air goes up. This is then pulled through this by a fan and it is then sent into the room. So, here is where the room is. So, the relative humidity is uh, available at the inlet. So, we look up uh, P sat corresponding to 40 degrees Celsius from the temperature table which is uh, 7.381 kilo Pascal. So, the partial pressure of water vapor at the inlet is 1.107 kilo Pascal and the humidity ratio at the inlet uh, comes out to be 6 grams, 6.8 grams of vapor per kilogram of dry air. Notice that the amount of water vapor in the air is very low since the relative humidity is only 15 percent. So, mass flow rate of dry air uh, may be evaluated in the same manner as before. Uh, we are given that the um, volume flow rate of air at the inlet is 1.344 meter cube per second. Uh, so, if you convert this in the same manner as before, this comes out to be 1.5 kg per second. What is that? A mass flow rate of water in this case uh, is uh, the exact opposite of what we did before. In the previous example, water was condensing from the air and being collected and was leaving the control volume. Here, water is being added to the control volume, but the uh, balance uh, remains the same. So, uh, the mass flow rate of vapor at the exit is nothing but mass flow rate of vapor at the inlet plus how much ever uh, water is being sent into the uh, into the wick. Remember, uh, the wick is operating at steady state, which means that the mass flow rate that is being sent into the wick is all evaporating, while the wick itself remains soaked and contains the same amount of water. Okay? So, we can work out the um, uh, mass flow rate of water uh, from this and we also use the uh, definition of uh, humidity ratio to write this in terms of omega. Now, SFE notice that uh, we do not have enough data to evaluate this omega 2 uh, is not known, omega 1 is known, but omega 2 is not known. So, we will not be able to evaluate m dot w from this expression. So, SFE applied to the control volume looks uh, reads like this q dot is 0 there is no heat loss, but w x dot is not 0 because there is a fan and electrical work is being supplied to the fan. So, if we rearrange um, uh, the terms in this expression you get min minus w x dot equal to this and again. Uh, we have uh, collected the terms uh, for dry air and collected the terms for water vapor and then liquid water. Okay? And again in the same manner as before we treat the dry air as an ideal gas and approximate H v as H g of T 2 and H v 1 again as H g of T 1. And uh, so, we can now, so everything is known in this except for omega 2. So, if you rearrange, we get an expression for omega 2 that uh, reads like this and if we substitute the known values into this expression, we get omega 2 to be 0 0.0132 kg vapor per kg dry air. Remember, it was 6.8 grams of vapor per kg of dry air. Now, uh, it, it has increased almost doubled. So, now we may calculate the required mass flow rate of water and that is 9.492 uh, gram per second. So, um, based on this analysis you can uh, you should be able to realize that you know we can size the um, uh, size the, the cooler itself based on this the power of fan that is required. Uh, mass flow rate of air that can be drawn in amount of water. Remember, uh, water is a precious resource. So, we need to ensure that you know uh, we get uh, uh, we use as little water as possible while getting the best performance. So, all these uh, uh, design variables can be identified from the analysis that we are doing. 
So, that is the uh, power of uh, the concepts that you have learnt in the previous course, which are being applied to practical applications here. So, the relative humidity of the air may be evaluated using uh, this expression. So, here we know omega and we are actually calculating uh, phi uh, from omega. Okay. So, the familiar expression for omega is like this 0 0.622 uh, PV, uh, PV divided by P minus PV. So, uh, P is known at the exit that is one atmosphere, P V is also known at the exit, we evaluated uh, uh, P V at the exit. Uh, so, that is 25 degree Celsius, so that is P sat of uh, 25 degree Celsius. So, this is P sat of 25 degree Celsius. So, if you rearrange this, we may be, uh, we should be able to evaluate uh, the uh, relative humidity from here, which comes out to be 69.33 percent. So, the relative humidity was 15 percent at the inlet and at the exit it is uh, 69 percent. So, the air, the temperature of the air was 40 degrees Celsius at the inlet. Uh, so, it was 40 degrees Celsius at the inlet and it has become 25 degrees Celsius at the exit and the relative humidity is 69 percent, which is not bad. Okay. Now, um, so far we have uh, uh, defined um, uh, terms such as uh, humidity ratio, relative humidity uh, and we have actually worked out examples where these quantities were given or with the other quantities, we were asked to calculate uh, these quantities. But in a practical HVAC application, we need to know uh, the temperature of the air, which is relatively easy to measure. We also need to know either the relative humidity or the humidity ratio in order to be able to control this. In other words, so in, in all these examples, what we are asking now is how do we get this? Only when I know this or if you go to the previous example. So, if I am trying to design, uh, let us say an air conditioning system, I need to know this. Okay. So, how do I uh, evaluate phi or omega for the air in this room? Right. So, one, once I have a method or a technique by which I can measure it, then I can measure and then control it and then check to see whether it is working properly or not. So, what we are going to do next is uh, try to understand how uh, the uh, the two terms, one of the two terms, if I have one, then I have the other, one of the two terms, omega or phi, how it can be measured. Okay. So, we use a, a, a device called a sling psychrometer, uh, psychrometer for this purpose. Okay. So, the sling psychrometer has a handle and uh, it has two uh, thermometers. One is the usual thermometer. It is called the dry bulb thermometer because the bulb of the thermometer is dry, not normal. Okay. So, it is called the dry bulb thermometer and the temperature that this reads is the temperature of the air in the room as we understand it normally. Okay. Although in, uh, in the refrigeration air conditioning community, it is called the dry bulb temperature. It is the normal temperature that we have been using so far. So, when we say air at 25 degrees Celsius enters a duct, that is the temperature that we are talking about. Now, the other thermometer uh, is called a wet bulb thermometer because it is a bulb is covered by a cloth which is wet. Now, the uh, cloth should be uh, moistened in such a way that uh, it should be soaked, just soaked, but not uh, dripping. So, it should just be at the point of dripping. So, we keep adding water to the uh, to the cloth, so that it becomes more and more moist and when it is just about to start dripping, meaning no more water can be uh, held by the sock, that is when we stop this. So, that is the state of the, uh, the cloth uh, sock or uh, the wet bulb. So, now we uh, hold the handle and then swing this uh, the, uh, the, the two thermometers like this in a horizontal plane. Now, as the, uh, uh, as the thermometers are swung in a horizontal plane, the water begins to evaporate from the uh, cloth due to convective heat transfer in the air, it begins to evaporate. 
Now, and as it evaporates, uh, it cools the bulb and the temperature of the uh, uh, and the temperature reading in the thermometer uh, goes down. Okay. So, this reads uh, the dry bulb thermometer reads a constant value which is the temperature of the air in the room which remains constant. Now, the temperature reading in the wet bulb thermometer keeps going down as the water from the wick or the cloth uh, I am sorry the cloth evaporates. Okay. Now, uh, at some point the uh, temperature after decreasing uh, no longer decreases it remains the same. This happens when the uh, uh, air in the vicinity of the cloth has become saturated not the air in the entire room, but the air in the vicinity of the sock has become saturated so that no more water can evaporate from the uh, from the wet cloth. So, this temperature is called the wet bulb temperature. Okay. So, now we have uh, two quantities that we have measured the dry bulb temperature which is the usual temperature and a wet bulb temperature. So, what we knew, need now is a thermodynamic model which we can use to uh, evaluate either omega or phi from these two measurements. Okay. So, we need to construct a thermodynamic model which represents the process and that the water vapor near this uh, cloth has undergone. Okay. So, we turn to something called this model is called the uh, in fact this temperature as I said is called the wet bulb temperature, but the model that we build will give us what is called an adiabatic saturation temperature. And this adiabatic saturation temperature is a very close approximation, very good engineering approximation of the wet bulb temperature. Okay. We do not really want to get caught up with the heat transfer, the details of heat transfer near the uh, cloth and so on. Okay. That would be superfluous for a thermodynamic analysis. So, we build a uh, thermodynamic model which approximates this process reasonably well and the temperature that we get out of that is called a adiabatic saturation temperature. Okay. So, the model that we have uh, idealizes or visualizes what is called an adiabatic saturator. So, basically moist air at uh, temperature T1 enters a duct which is insulated and there is a reservoir of water at a temperature T3. Okay. Now, T1 is greater than T3, so the air is hotter than the water in the reservoir. So, as the air flows over the reservoir, the water begins to evaporate. And if we make the duct long enough, although I have shown it uh, short in this illustration, if I make this duct very, very long like this, then the air when it leaves the duct, uh, say let us call this uh, 2, if I make it uh, very, very long. So, the air when it leaves is at the same temperature as the water and the relative humidity will be equal to 100 percent. The air is saturated because uh, it is uh, picking up more and more of the water vapor that is evaporating. Okay. Its moisture content increases and its temperature drops. Remember, so when it finally leaves, uh, in fact, it will leave at the same temperature and become saturated, T2 will become equal to T3. And as we have already said, T1 is greater than T3. So, the air, the temperature of the air uh, decreases because the uh, enthalpy uh, that is required for evaporating the water is drawn from the air stream. So, the temperature of the air stream drops and at the same time its moisture content increases. So, when it leaves the adiabatic saturator, two things are important T2 is equal to T3 and the relative humidity is 100 percent. In fact, the temperature T2 uh, would be uh, an excellent engineering approximation. This is the adiabatic saturation temperature and there is an excellent approximation to the wet bulb temperature. So, this is a thermodynamic model which uh, simulates or mimics the uh, wet bulb in the wet bulb in the wet bulb thermometer. So, the highlights are the duct should be made sufficiently long. Uh, and at the exit, the temperature T2 is equal to T3 and phi 2 is equal to 100 percent as we have already said. Okay. And we can say that the mixture pressure remains the same, that is uh, nothing to change the mixture pressure. So, that remains the same between inlet and exit.
ok. So, the temperature T 2 is called the adiabatic saturation temperature and if you take P 1 equal to uh, 1 atmosphere, then the adiabatic saturation temperature is an excellent approximation of the wet bulb temperature. Although, may be not so for uh, P 2 equal to let us say 2 atmospheres ok. There are psychrometric applications where the pressure is not 1 atmosphere, but 2 atmospheres. So, the departure uh, between T A s uh, and T uh, wet bulb uh, will be higher at the higher pressure, but for 1 atmosphere it is an excellent approximation and that is what we are going to use. So, first we uh, start off with the mass balance of water m dot V 2 the mass of water vapor that leaves is equal to mass, mass of water vapor that comes in plus mass flow rate of liquid water that is being supplied. So, we are at a steady state. So, make up water has to be supplied to the reservoir. Remember, make up water has to be supplied to the reservoir so that the level remains the same in the reservoir. So, the make up mass flow rate has to be adjusted so that the level remains the same and that is an indication that steady state has been attained. So, we may write like this the mass flow rate of dry air remains the same. So, we may uh, write it like this m dot a times omega 2 minus omega 1. Now, S of E a applied to the control volume uh, that is shown looks like this q dot is 0 w uh, x dot is 0 and again we sort out uh, or we separate uh, the enthalpy change for the dry air, water, vapor and liquid water. And in the same manner as before, we uh, approximate this like this with the uh, calorically perfect gas assumption. And again, HV2 is approximated as Hg of T2, HV1 is approximated as Hg of T1. And the mass flow rate of dry air comes out, everything is written in terms of omega. So, the mass flow rate of dry air comes out. So, since it is equal to 0, this drops out and we end up with an expression that looks like this. So, if you look at this expression, T 2 is known. Remember, we are saying T 2 is T wet bulb for P 1 equal to 1 atmosphere, right. T 1 is nothing but the dry bulb temperature that we measure. So, this is the air whose relative humidity or omega that we are trying to measure. So, T 1 is the dry bulb temperature, T 2 is the wet bulb temperature, ok. Now, uh, this is known, this is known, C p is known. Uh, now, the um, uh, only quantity that is not known in this or at least it, it appears prima facie that there are two quantities that are known, both omega 1 and omega 2, but you have to bear in mind that omega that the air is saturated at exit, ok. So, which means that omega 2 is equal to omega sat of T uh, 2. In other words, uh, uh, P V 2 is equal to P sat of T 2. So, omega 2 is equal to 0 0.622 P sat of T 2 which is known divided by P minus P sat of T 2. Note that P is known, P sat of T 2 is known. So, omega 2 is, uh, is also known, only omega 1 is unknown. So, omega 2 is known only omega 1 is unknown. So, omega 1 alone is not known, all the other quantities are known. So, if you rearrange the previous expression, uh, after taking omega 1 to the left hand side, we end up with an expression like this and as I just uh, mentioned, omega 2 may be written like this. So, once we have measured uh, uh, the wet bulb and the dry bulb temperature, which correspond to uh, T 2 and T 1 in this expression omega 1 may be evaluated. So, once the wet bulb temperature is known, omega 2 may be evaluated and then based on that omega 1 may be evaluated. So, that is how we measure omega. Once omega is known, evaluating a relative humidity is very easy to do. Normally, in engineering applications, uh, omega is the quantity of interest because that is the uh, ratio of mass of water vapor to, uh, to dry air. So, that actually tells us how much water needs to be added uh, to the air or how much water should be removed from the air. So, omega is the quantity of engineering interest, phi is the quantity of practical interest, okay. Relative humidity is what people say, what is the relative humidity in this room, 
right? it is high or low. But omega is the quantity of engineering interest because that is what we are going to control by adding mass uh, water to the air or by removing uh, water, from, uh, water from the air. Okay? So, by measuring wet bulb and dry bulb temperature, we can actually evaluate the uh, humidity ratio in the given sample of air. And the important thing is the dry bulb temperature obviously is greater than the wet bulb temperature which itself is greater than the dew point temperature. The similarity uh, probably some of you may have realized the similarity between the dew point temperature and the wet bulb temperature. Okay. Wet bulb temperature is not the uh, dew point temperature okay. that you should uh, bear in mind okay. because the bulb is still wet and it reaches a steady state does not go below that. In fact, this uh, is shown in our TV diagram like this. So, the, the given sample of water this is the uh, so this is at a temperature temperature given by the dry bulb thermometer and this is the temperature given by the wet bulb thermometer and this is the dew point temperature. Okay. So, you can see that T dry bulb is greater than T wet bulb and which itself is greater than the dew point temperature. Okay. So, the wet bulb temperature comes out uh, it is um, uh, it is on the saturated vapor line because uh, the air in the vicinity of the, um, uh, of the wet bulb is saturated not the air in the room. Okay. So, it falls on the saturated vapor line for that reason. So, as you can see from this uh, figure T dry bulb greater than T wet bulb greater than dew point temperature. Okay. Let us uh, work out a couple of examples involving the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures. So, the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures in a room are measured to be 25 degree Celsius and 18 degree Celsius respectively. Assuming the pressure to be one atmosphere determine the humidity ratio relative humidity and dew point temperature. So, from the temperature table we can get uh, P sat of 25 degree Celsius uh, H V uh, 1 which is H G of 25 degree Celsius P sat uh, corresponding to the wet bulb temperature uh, H F corresponding to uh, wet bulb temperature and H G corresponding to wet bulb temperature. So, all these values uh, can now be plugged into this expression. So, remember this is T wet bulb So, we first calculate uh, omega wet bulb which comes out to be like this. So, omega wet bulb expression for omega wet bulb is given here. So, omega wet bulb comes out to be like this and from which we can evaluate omega to be 0 0.01 kg vapor per kg dry air. So, once I have omega um, from the expression for um, um, for omega we may evaluate the partial pressure of water vapor to be 1.603 kilo Pascal. Dry bulb temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. So, the relative humidity uh, may be evaluated as 50.6 percent. Now, from the temperature table T sat of 1.603 kilo Pascal is 14 degree Celsius and that is the uh, dew point temperature. So, you can see that dry bulb temperature is 25, wet bulb temperature is 18, dew point temperature is 14. So, T dry bulb greater than T wet bulb greater than T dew point. So, in the next lecture what we plan to do is to introduce the psychrometric chart. Okay. Now, uh, the, uh, the analysis that we have done so far um, uh, mass balance of water, mass balance of dry air, uh, SFEA applied to the control volume these are actually uh, quite adequate for solving any uh, such problem in HVAC. 
but the engineering community actually uses a psychrometric chart for uh, doing calculations in HVAC. That's uh, the chart is very handy and um, uh, quite useful also. So, what we will do in the next lecture is to see what the chart is all about, why we need a chart and uh, how the chart can actually make life easy for uh, easy while doing uh, such calculations. So, there is, there is there are no shortcomings with uh, the procedures that we have outlined. Okay? So, the chart simply makes it easy to do this calculation. Okay? In fact, we can do the calculations faster if you use the chart. So, what we will do is we will try to solve each one of this example using the chart so that you understand that there is nothing wrong with what we have done or there are no shortcomings in what we have done. It is simply easier and quicker to use the psychrometric chart which is uh, for that reason it is quite extensively used by the refrigeration community.